ambassador now for uh, too long. But uh, I wanted to take a few moments to talk about uh, my favorite kite in the lineup and one that I have enjoyed since the day it launched back in 2011, and that would be the Drifter. Uh, for my style of riding, which is has been 100% uh, strapless, you know, whether it be foil, surfboard, skimboard, wakeskate, um, this kite suits the purpose all the time, every time, and never ceases to leave a smile on my face. Uh, a couple of the key features that make the Drifter so unique, um, I kind of equate this kite to a, uh, a video game style of kite. Uh, you see it, you can make it happen, and the bar is like a controller, and you can just constantly maneuver this kite any way you want. It's very quick to adapt in a lot of different situations. Uh, it's exceptional at situations where even you may have overflown the kite, maybe you're on your foil and you caught a wave and you came underneath your kite, and I'm constantly amazed at how this kite literally will sit in the air, you'll look up and you'll see your lines almost completely slack, and it's still flying and you can yoke the bar or pull one of the flying lines and uh, right back, boom, you're going again. So stability, if you want a kite that's extremely stable and reacts extremely well without having to think too much in advance, um, this is absolutely the kite for you. The Drifter is such a cool kite because mainly of the fact that it's such a specialized kite. It flies differently than, than other kites in our range for sure and you'll definitely be rewarded by exploring all those different uh, flying behaviors. Um, you know, one of the things that makes this kite exceptional is its slackline drift, the fact that it, can, it travels with you downwind and amazingly stays aloft when, you know, a lot of other kites would have fallen out of the sky. Uh, because of that design characteristic, it sits further back in the window. Now, what that means is, is you're gonna have to be more efficient about uh, thinking about getting upwind. Uh, if you're in surf conditions, you're probably gonna wanna ride as much swell upwind as you can to get back into the lineup to where you wanna be. Um, and, and keep that in mind, that it may not be quite as effective as some other kites uh, at getting upwind because it does sit further back, uh, back in the window. Uh, additionally, uh, if you're riding in extremely gusty conditions, uh, this kite uh, really rewards you for flying it. Uh, and actually to derive the maximum benefit out of this kite, you really do need to cycle this kite. Um, its ability to turn power on and off uh, is what makes it an amazing surf kite, but also it doesn't really uh, fly as well if you just park it and go. You want to fly this kite and when you need the power, you cycle the kite, turn it on, down loop it, whatever it may be, uh, you know, and also in gusty conditions, you know, that's a situation where you're gonna to wanna to fly the kite more than just, you know, set it and forget it. Another thing that uh, a lot of people don't pick up on when they get the kite, uh, and that is the A and B setting. And the A and B setting, uh, for me, I'm all about the B setting. Uh, if you like the kite to immediately shut off, and what I mean by that is just as quickly as possible, uh, push up the bar and have the, the, the kite dump power, the B setting is, is going to get you there the fastest with the least amount of travel on the chicken loop. Um, so that for me is, is critical for my style of riding. And on top of it, um, when you've got it in the B setting, the kite feels more direct um, and it has more bar pressure, which is, you know, old school, whatever you want to call it. I love bar pressure in a kite. It lets me know where the kite is at all times, no matter how many times I've been washed around in a wave or however many spins I did. I know without looking at the, at the uh, kite, I know where it is, no, you know, whether I'm completely blind to it or not. And that's something that I find pretty critical when it comes to, uh, to riding. I want to talk a little bit about the Nano Ripstop technology. That's our new material that comes on all the Cabrina kites. And a uh, little story I have is, uh, you know, during these COVID sessions, we're doing a lot of boat sessions with the beaches being closed. And here you can see that I had a, a little tear that happened in my canopy. This happened because I went to put my foil up on the boat, 
boat caught a piece of chop, popped my foil off, and of course my canopy was sitting right there, and I thought, oh God. I went to look at it and I was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty upset about it. Turns out that uh, you really can't see it, but um, the, my foil, which is, you know, like everyone's foil, relatively sharp, pretty much hit the canopy and only did a small little incision right here. The material itself basically stopped the kite, I mean the, uh, the, the foil from going further into the, uh, the canopy, which was really impressive. Um, in my old material, this would have ripped pretty much from from here all the way to a seam or all the way to a sewn seam and it stopped it so the nano ripstop material has definitely made a difference and comparing this kite just from like a newness feeling you can almost hear the crispiness of it and i've probably got a hundred hours on this kite easily um and its canopy is pretty much unchanged from the day that i got it last year so pretty impressive so check out if you're if you're the type of person that actually uses your kite and likes to keep them for you know four or five seasons, it is worth getting our latest generation of kites uh, in the 2020 models just for this material alone um, because the durability factor I think is going to prove out with this material over the test of time. You know I think that if you're the type of person that you know. For sure, like strapless riding, there you know this is by far the number one kite to use. Uh, if you like foil boarding, and whether it be strapless or strapped, you're not going to find a kite that's much better in the range due to its ability to drift downwind um, and stay with you and stay aloft. It's exceptionally good uh, when you loop it. Um, it has an extremely even power band, so you know it's not more power in the beginning of the loop and less power at the end. So if you need it to pull into waves, uh, if you ride a spot like I do, which is constantly a lot of onshore slop conditions, and you c reconnect on waves, looping the kite keeps you in the sweet spot of whatever that crummy wave is, it keeps you there. Um, and allows you to have power on demand when the wave isn't generating power. So from those, for all of those reasons, um, I find the Drifter to absolutely be our number one kite like i said i've loved it since uh since day one you can go back and read my review on lose the straps you know from uh from 2011 and see that that my love for this kite remains unchanged since then um and you're really not going to get a kite that's going to treat you you know it's going to put a smile on your kite i mean put a smile on your face much more every day than uh than getting to use this session after session after session and i've logged a lot of sessions on this kite um, if you have questions, comments, uh, you know, please feel, feel free to uh, leave them in the, in the description below or, or the comment section below. Happy to respond to you. And uh, go out and give it a shot. I think, uh, I think if you try it, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Keep ripping.